Hey everybody, and welcome to the second part of modeling the Adrian Purcell chair that we started modeling in the previous part. Now, up until now, in the first part, we went over how to create the leg, how to get that uh, routed wood look for the leg, and we also created the handrest for our uh, chair. So now what we need to do is we need to create the rest of these elements for this chair which is the seat and the uh, support beams for this chair. So let's start off with the big part, which is going to be the actual seat. Now for this one, I'm going to try to make it really simple. So I'm going to do is control right click and just select a line or you can just go over and in your creation uh, menu over here, create a spline and click line. So I'm going to do this one, line like this down to the bottom another one till about there and one up until here that's all we need now i'm going to move this spline all the way over here to the end where it's supposed to start and now i need something to basically make this thing as long as the actual seat is so for that, what I'm going to do is on top of this line, I'm going to add an extrude modifier. Now this extrude modifier can be controlled how thick I want it, depending on how big the seat is. I think I had it at around here, which is more or less about 67. So minus 67, that works just fine. Also remember again that in this sort of a look, we have to deal with the actual perspective distortion. So there we go. So I have this as a starting point for my chair. Next thing I want to do is I want to give this thing some thickness. Now I can see the thickness over here and that is easily done by just making a shell modifier. Now instead of here going on the positive, I'm going to have to go on the outer over here. And that's going to give me more or less total control. So about 10 centimeters should be the right thickness for this thing, I think. All right, goes well. And there we go. We have the thickness for the chair. Now, that's looking nice over there. All right. So what I'm going to do now is put an edit poly on top of this. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is just go ahead, put a connect in the middle. I'm actually going to put it like this. I'm going to put three connects and I'm going to delete one half because, well, I don't really need it. And I can just use uh, this half of the chair to work with and the rest I can use a symmetry modifier later on. Now, the reason for doing it this way is that if I take a look at the back side of this chair, what I can notice is that it has this sort of an arc here. Now, the easiest way to create something like this without actually having to go in and uh, manually fixing all of this is very simple, actually. What you have to do is just select this edge over here and move it forward like this. Now, this is going to be moved forward depending on how far it needs to go on our reference image. So I'm going to move this thing down as well. Like so, maybe up until like something around here. All right, let's move this edge to about there. All right, awesome. And this one, I'm going to slightly move it downwards like this so it kind of follows this shape a bit better there we go all right that's fine now in the front viewport i need to set up the height right that's right that's okay awesome now, in here, 
I'm not going to follow along uh, this spline or this line because, like I said, we have that perspective distortion and that is going to basically screw up our model if we try to follow it along here. So I know for a fact that this thing is straight because when I take a look at it from here, it's straight, doesn't have any other uh, curves. So we are on point with this as it is, so just like this. Now. It doesn't still look like this because, well, it's very, very low poly at the moment. So now we can start adding in some more geometry to help us with the form to better uh, follow this thing. So what can, I can do is I can start modeling right away or I can put an additional edit poly. So in case I screw up something, I can just uh, delete the edit poly modifier. All right, so I'm going to try and add in some extra edges. Let's see how that thing looks. All right, let's move it down like that. That should break it in just a tiny bit. It's going to give me the ability to control how sudden that changes in the dip over there. That's fine. All right. I actually think this is going to be good enough for now. If I put a turbo smooth at the moment, it's going to be very, very uh, gooey because, well, I don't have any support edges. So let's add in some support edges for this. Let's add in one over here at the end. Let's see how that thing is going to look. All right. One extra to hold it down there. Another one at the bottom. All right. Slowly starting to get that look but we will need one more over here and now by adding it by adding in that corner right there if i isolate this thing and let's just quickly go ahead and reposition our pivot so it's in the middle over here and right below the turbo smooth let's add in a symmetry modifier so we actually see the whole thing like this so if I turbo smooth on, we can see that we are slowly starting to get that look that we had over here on this chair. So we, we didn't have to do any uh, fancy modeling. We're slowly starting to get that uh, look only by moving some of these edges around. All right, so I'm going to move this thing just a tiny bit to the side, add in one more edge in here to make sure we have a more sharp uh, change all right and i'm slowly starting to look at the details all right i'm going to take these two move them downwards and again i know it kind of looks funky because we're using a very low uh, poly base but the thing here is that the lower uh, low, the lower polygon you, you're using for your base mesh, the less you have to do in moving. Like it's a lot easier to add in extra geometry later on than it is to remove if you've put in too much. So this way I have much more control over how I want this thing to look like in the end. And I'm looking at this as the form when I'm comparing it to this piece over here because I can see that I have some cushy part on the top and also I have these six indentions for buttons and these buttons are actually used to keep the fabric on top of the seating and we will add those uh, as well but for now I'm just trying to keep this thing over there now I'm going to put in one more division over there there we go maybe we don't need the second one Okay, slowly starting to get the look. And there we go. I actually might need to add in something like this. All right, let's check it out from the side and the isolate. Uh, 
let's see. All right, so it does perk out a bit. Yes, it does. We have to check some of the ones that don't have this frontal perspective distortion. But it actually looks right. There we go. Now, word of advice is when you're modeling something like this, the best case scenario is if you can actually get your hands on the actual blueprints. Because whenever you're doing modeling and you have to deal with perspective distortion, you will have to eventually guesstimate some pieces. And if this is a very, very important thing to your client or to the model that you're creating, and they don't really want any guesstimation, well, then you might get, get yourself into some trouble. So if it's possible, try and go ahead and get the actual blueprints. But if, if you cannot get the blueprints, well, in that case, some guesstimation is okay as well. Just make sure that it looks similar to what you're doing like this. All right, so there we go. I'm going to try and get me just a bit of this puffing this back. There we go. All right. And I'm going to select these ones and move them down a bit. And that's going to give me a more rounder look at the top. All right. Looks pretty good. I actually move these inwards. Okay, we're slowly starting to get there with the shape for this thing. Oh, the front here needs one more edge. All right, we have the base for this thing. So let's uh, start giving it some more detail for the seat. I'm going to start off by going over here on the corners. Now, since I already do have this middle part here, I'm going to go and simply just move it to the side a bit. That's going to give me that fullness or thickness on the sides right there. Just make sure that it doesn't protrude to the side there. There we go. Something like this. All right. Let's select this. Again, just move it outwards a bit. Actually, let's skip on that lowest one. That's going to give me the thickness. And move these guys just a bit upwards. Well, I don't think we have to do this. these two. The corners one are fine. All right, that's going to give me a bit of leeway over there. Well, I'm still not so happy about this one. So let's... Uh, do this. I'm going to select all of these edges and move them inwards, more towards the center, so we have a more even distribution of the geometry. All right, looks nice. Looks right. Nothing else. All right, size from the side. Looks okay. Okay, let's fix up the front here. I can see that the seat has a bit of a different uh, depth here. So just move this one up to the front a bit. There we go, that's good enough. And uh, select this. With the edge constraints, just move it backwards a bit. Same thing over here. Without that front one. There we go. So we get that roundness on the front. We got the roundness on the corners. And it's looking nice so far. Now, the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to give this thing uh, a preparation for adding these uh, buttonholes that we have. Uh, the three on the uh, cut side here. And we have three on the bottom here. Now, for these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in First of all, just two connections in the middle side right here and two more over there. 
Now, the reason why I'm doing this is that I can now select these parts, which are the seating place and well, maybe even this one and slightly move them upward, upwards, but make sure we uh, turn off the constraints. And then just leave these two and move this thing up as well. So that's going to give me some uh, look that like it's a bit more fuller. I move this thing to, to the front like so. And that's good enough. So if I turn on the final look right now, right, right now I can see that this looks like it's a bit fuller now. And you have that look like there is something protruding through the surface. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to hide them for now, just so they're not in the way. There we go. I can see that look. I might actually need to just ever so slightly move these ones up as well. There we go. These are very, very small details but they will help drive the uh, final results. Now to add in those holes that we need for our buttons, we're going to use, uh, well, basically since we already have a symmetry, this means we only have to do it on one side. And one is going to be in the middle right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this vertex and then I'm going to select this one over here. So with these two, actually, I might actually go in and put in one extra spline in there to hold this form. Let's just see how this is going to look. And let me compare it with what we have in here. Yeah, I think that this is going to look better. If I just go ahead and move this thing, I was just like the up front, just so it's not that thick. There we go. So this is more in line with what I'm seeing. And if I have it like this, what I can do now is select this vertex over here and this one on this side as well. And just use a simple chamfer modifier on this. Now for the chamfer, I'm just going to increase the, the size. Vertex that it's fine. I think something like this is going to work. All right, that's okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this vertex in the middle. Select this one, control click here on the polygon and move this thing downwards. Oh, just make sure that we, we don't have constraints on, move them downwards like so. All right. Now, the thing here is that we are using Turbo Smooth. What Turbo Smooth does, it, it will take whatever geometry you have and it will convert it into a you know, quad. So we, we can use a bit of uh, cleanup here, but we don't have to stress too much if we have some angons, even triangles left over. But in this case, we actually do want this thing to go across to this side over here. Th that way we are actually left with a quad there and another quad over here. So I'm going to just use those two to go ahead and uh, connect. But now I'm uh, stuck with a problem over here. So I'm going to connect there and connect there, which again leaves me with a triangle. So I want to go back here and leaving it as an angon in here is going to give me a bit of pinching but in my case especially for this model that pinching is not a, such a bad idea because well if we take a look at the model we're going to notice that there is some pinching there especially around those places right here you can see because the fabric is being pulled down so I'm actually going to use that to my advantage in this case. So leave it like this and let's test it out. 
see how this thing looks you can see those issues that we are having from the pinching but they're actually working well for us so if i go ahead and i can re i can even remove this and go and do the connections like this I will get those pinchings again, but it will uh, work to my advantage. So let's select this one and this one, connect, this one and this one, again, connect. Just want to make sure it actually selected the right one. And if we have something like this, simply just target weld this thing to there. Actually, I'm going to select all of these as well as all of these. And hit them with a very, very small weld, just so I make sure that I don't have any bubble vertices. But I, since I actually don't, there we have. So we have those three holes at the bottom here, but I don't think that this one is all the way to the side here. So I'm going to select it. Grow the selection. I'm actually going to grow this one as well. Oh no, just going to move this to the side until I get it to a point where I'm actually okay with this. Now, if I can see this thing in the blueprint, it's okay. If not, I'm just going to leave it like this. All right, so geometry wise, looks okay with the turbo smooth, trying to fix up all the issues that we might have with the geometry, but it's doing a really good job. So let's do the same thing over here as well. So select that vertex, select this one. Again, hit it with the chamfer. A bit smaller this time around. Something maybe like this. Awesome, select that one, this one, control click and move it inwards just a tiny bit. That's gonna give me the, uh, the depth. I can do the same thing over here with the, the connects. And again, I can get away by doing this because in the actual model, I can see that the fabric is being pulled by these holes in here, like this. There we go, we can actually see that thing over here, but it's not so prominent in this side. So, let's move that thing back there. Let's try and fix this one then. Select both of these. Select these. And there we go. So we don't have that, that much of a pinch. Let's see if I remove these two. All right, I might actually move this thing upwards. There we go, so it gets a bit more volume back. And this does look like a hole now. All right, now the other good thing about this is that we can actually, we do need to put in some buttons on top of this like so so they're gonna cover up those holes as well so let's go ahead and add that uh creating the buttons is actually really easy just go all on top of it use a sphere there we go up we need just half of it we don't need this many sides let's try 16 there we go so edit poly Delete this. Scale it downwards. Hold on, shift. There we go, once down. 
man, just collapse this maybe. I don't want to. That's gonna work. So we put one in here like so. All right, adding a turbo smooth on it. That works just fine. One over there, another one over here. So we have these three for this one. Just hold on shift, drag them upwards, put them into position, rotate around. Move them back. Actually, I'm going to have to move these ones back as well. There we go, in position. There we go, so that covers up our holes. And we can move on to the rest of our model. So I'll hide this, for now it's okay. Okay. But actually as I'm looking at this thing, I can see that here we have some issues. So let's quickly just fix this one up. I'm going to remove the edges that we added in here. Remove those ones and remove these ones in the bottom. I don't want to have that pinching effect. That's going to get rid of those. Yeah, there we go. That's uh, fixed up. Let's put the turbo smooth on too so we get more detail there. And another thing that I actually do see as an issue in the moment is that these holes should be closer to each other. So let's uh, go down here, select just the geometry for the holes. Actually select the ones above here as well. And slightly offset them to the side here. That's going to give me a better look. There we go. All right. So they're more in line with the ones on the bottom. Okay. Select these two, move them over to the side. And I'm actually have to move the actual buttons that we created as well. Now coincide with the new geometry. There we go. The same thing over here. All right, better. I don't want to have this pinch in here. So easily fixed. Just select this spline or this uh, line with the constraints on just move it downwards the same thing for this one on the top select these push it upwards and that gets rid of that um, pinch in the sides so now we have geometry that's much closer but i think i have some issues over here as well so let's quickly move this thing outwards like this so it's kind of fixes up this issue all right move it down all right i think yeah now we have a much cleaner look i have the holes in the right places there are no no bumps i have a clearly well-defined back here the arch is fine actually i just quickly check this here make sure that it's in the right spot same as this one actually that's fine There we go. The arc is well defined. We have the turn, the thickness here. Well, the center 
might just need a small push. Like so, and this one. And there we go. All right. We are on par with adding in the details. And let's just take the same uh, thing that we already have over here and add a mirror on the X as a copy. Move this thing to the side. Make sure it's, oh, did I just move it? Yes, I did. All right, front. There we go, right here. I'm going to make this thing gray as well, so it's not taking away from our focus. All right, so I have all of this uh, done. I just need to add in the uh, back and the front, uh, the front and the back connecting piece for this part over here, for this one. And we have one more for the front right here. But since these are just uh, very simple uh, planks, nothing to them, I'm just gonna uh, add them after um, off uh, off camera so you don't have to spend time uh, wa watching me do it. All right, so uh, this is what I've done. I've just went in, I've created one uh, box, I've chamfered the box in here. Put it down as a base here and i've done the same thing for the back side over here as well and that's pretty much it for uh the support for this chair now one of the things that i did notice is that on the back side here we have one ridge that's basically going to be used for the stitching so let's really quickly go in and create that ridge before we are finished with the model so i'm going to uh, on top of the turbo smooth i'm going to use edit poly and just select the the spline where I'm going to have the ridge. Now, in this case, should be, I think, this spline. And since it goes around the corner here as well, I want that thing there as well. That's good. Now, I'm going to go and actually, before I do this, I want to use the final result as two iterations, as it is. But for now, I'm going to use one. Then put the turbo smooth or put the edit poly on top of this one. Now select this whole edge again. There we go. Now use a small extrude in here. So maybe something like 0 0.5 and give it a height of something like this. Just enough so we have a small indentation. So maybe like 0 0.5 as well. All right, and click OK. That should be enough. And now, since we used uh, for the final result two iterations of Turbo Smooth, we, but we removed one, now by just re-adding one more on top of this, we get the same result, but with that extra bit of, uh, of a crease in there for that stitching to go in. And as for the actual stitching, what we can do is we can go in here Put another edit poly on top just double click on the entire uh, spline in here and go and create a shape it can be smooth linear doesn't really matter I'm go with linear for now and all right now select the spline and what i want to do is at the moment if i take a look at this thing you're going to see that uh it's the size of this spline or the size of all of these uh small uh, pieces of the spline are not uh, the same. It kind of depends on where we had a vertex when we were creating it. So I want to normalize it. So I'm going to go in my modifier, go normalize spline. And by doing it this way, I'm going to decrease the segment or the segment length to something like maybe uh, one centimeter. And by doing it this way, it's going to make sure that I, every one centimeter, I have one of these uh, spline points so let's try and make it even smaller 0 0.5 there we go now on top of this put an edit spline and if i take a look at here you're going to notice that all of these 
vertices that we uh, have in here, like all select, they're at half a centimeter distance. Although I think this might be a bit too much. Let's go back to one centimeter. Oh, this is going to be a problem. For some reason, it's screwing up now. All right. All right. Well, I guess we're going with 0 0.5. Now, I have all of these. And here's the trick to get some quick stitching. Uh, select all of the vertices and just break them from each other. So right click and you can go to break vertices like so. Now go in here and right click convert to edible spline. In the rendering just make it so it's renderable like so decrease the actual size of these so make it something like 0 0.2 0 0.4 all right now select all of these elements so all the segments and scale them oh nope All right, all the splines, and there we go. We make them smaller by scaling them inwards. So by doing it this way, what happens now if I put an uh, actual turbo smooth on top of this already existing spline, they will look something like this. Now, if you want to make this thing bigger or smaller, it, you can just uh, control this thing by how big you make your splines in the normalized spline modifier stack. In my case, it's a very small one. So when we render this thing, this is going to look as a nice addition to our model. And with this, we're actually finished with the modeling phase of the Adrian Purcell chair. So I hope you guys had fun and you managed to pick up on some new tricks from this video. If you would like to support me, you can always click the join button and the direct links will be in the description below. And as always, the most helpful thing you can do is just hit that like and subscribe buttons and leave a comment below in the video. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.